Okay, how's it going? So normally when I do this part of the tutorial in Vulkan, I do it as one video, as one section, but I wanted to split it up. So here goes. In this, um, in the previous section when we made the um, Vulkan instance, we had the option to specify some extensions and layers that we wanted to enable. And in this video, I want to just go through the process of querying which extensions and layers the instance can support. As before, I'm not going to be live coding this because I found that I have a tendency to literally talk through every line of code and that must be really boring to watch. So uh, code is linked in the description, full code. You can jump in and have a look at it. But um, here's the explanation of it. So here we are in Vim in our project and I'm just going to sort of talk through the process, if that makes sense. So, of course, we start with our app, and this is unchanged. We go ahead, we build our window, and then we go and initialize our renderer. In the process of initializing the renderer, I'll just jump in here. One thing that I'm doing, we see right up the top, is I'm grabbing this um, SDL extensions. So this is pretty similar to GLFW, how you can query GLFW and say, hey, GLFW, which Vulkan extensions do you need in order to operate? SDL is pretty similar to that, but there's something very funky going on. And that is, I'm trying to get SDL to know about Vulkan if that makes sense. And this is being handled in the SDL backend. So if we go over to our SDL backend, we see that in our SDL backend, we also depend on Vulkan and we depend on the SDL Vulkan um, sub package there. And one of the bits in here, if we go in, is this um, SDL Vulkan sub package is a generic package. In other words, it doesn't really exist by itself. We need to instantiate it. And in order to do that, we need to specify a few things. We need to basically, now this is really weird. I'll, I'll talk about this in a second, but we basically need to tell it what our conventions are. So, which um, sort of address type is being used to specify the null instance, um, which data type is being used to specify the surface and so on. Now, like I said, this is really strange because looking at this instance address type, I would expect this to be the data type of an instance. However, if I go down, it looks like um, get instance procedure address returns this instance address type, um, which would indicate that this is the data type of an instance procedure. Uh, I really, I'm not sure. I, I'm guessing it's just like some sort of void pointer that we can cast any way we want. Um, but the thing that I want to get into is this get instance extensions. So, there's a few things to unpack here. Um, first of all, we can just treat this as it says in the spec, like, hey, if you give me a window, I can give you the list of extension names that SDL is going to need. Um, but it also says here, we have this custom data type, which is returned because we're gonna be dealing with vectors of strings. So SDL has its own basic vector of strings type Vulkan has its own basic vector of strings type. They're pretty similar. We might need to do a little bit to convert one to the other, but um, if we go in and have a look at this, it says we have this extension name arrays data type. That's any sort of array of ADA unbounded strings. So the thing to bear in mind is, hey, you know, when I query SDL and say, 
what extensions do you need? It's going to give me back some sort of array of unbounded strings. Okay, good to know. So if we just go back, I can go ahead and instantiate the SDL Vulkan package, and that will be used down below in this get SDL extensions function. And that get SDL extensions function is pretty much just a wrapper around the um, get instance extensions function within the SDL Vulkan package that I instantiated. So yes, I do understand that I'm talking around in circles a little bit. It is what it is. There's a reason I'm splitting this into two videos. Now, if I go down, and that's, that's pretty cool, that's pretty interesting, um, but I've also gone ahead and I've added some more functions to my logger. So my logger is now gonna have functions to print lists of extension and layer names. Now, these are vectors of extension properties or vectors of layer properties. And as you would be familiar from vectors, we have the package and then the package has a vector type described within it. Cool. So these print functions are surprisingly straightforward. We can see in the body that all they involve is pretty much element wise looping one at a time and putting out the um, extension or layers name. So that's pretty cool. Now, if we go in and have a look at what this is actually doing, this is being done in the instances body. So just the same as before, I have my app info, my create info, and I've also got these requested um, extensions and layers. And here's how we can verify sort of what that is. There we go. I'm all over the place. Okay. So the question is, let's say we don't know what this code is, but we need to know like what data type should we use? For these requested extensions and layers. Like I said, they're basically a, a list of strings, a vector of strings, an array of strings, however you want to see it. We can verify what is being asked for by going over to the instance create info and then going into the definition. We have this crea instance create info and then we can go over to these two variables and they both have the same data type of this um, string vectors vector. So we can go into the definition and we see that um, this string vectors is a package within Vulkan. See down the bottom, we're in the Vulkan ADA specification. It's basically a vector, a container of strings. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, that's an example of how we can like look into this sort of stuff. So anyway, I'm, I'm just going along just to test. I'll just get my logger. Cause I want to see basically what is SDL requesting. Now I can go in. print that out. Let's go ahead and give this a go. Alrighty. So right at the top, we can see that SDL is requesting the Kronos surface and Kronos Wayland surface extensions. Um, currently we're not requesting any layers. I'll put that in later. Um, but here's a bit of a, of a preview of what we've got. So the function up above, which is checking for support for debugging purposes, it's also printing out everything that we can support. So uh, we can see all of the instance extensions, which my graphics card will support, as well as all of the supported layers. Now, as we can see in here, um, both the Kronos surface and Kronos Wayland surface extensions are supported. So all good. Hmm. Yeah, nice to know. 
Okay, well, back to the code, I'll just go and remove those lines. Okay, so how is this supported stuff actually working? Well, we can go up above, and the first thing I'd want to do is get the set of extensions and layers which our device can support. And that's done with the Vulkan Core enumerate uh, function. Again, we can just go in there and we can see these two functions together. It's basically, there they are. Okay, good to know. So this is pretty much just a for loop, right? For each of these. So for each of the extensions which we are requesting, we basically try to find that extension in the set of supported extensions, you know, looking at them one at a time. Um, if we go through all the extensions and we don't find the one that we're after, then we sort of break out and say, well, we failed. Um, and it's pretty much the same for supported layers. Yeah, there we have it. Okay, so I'll probably leave this here, um, but I've actually gone ahead and uploaded the code for both this and the next step. So the next step will be to request or set up validation layers so we can get some um, error logging stuff happening. But yeah, that'll be it for now. Um, have fun, all the best, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.